Question 1. Write the following numbers in order of size. Start with the smallest number. Well, the smallest number is this one over here. So it's 0 0.309. Second smallest number is this one over here, 0 0.32. So 0 0.32. The next one is going to be this number over here, 0 0.35. And the biggest number from the list is 0 0.4. Question 2. Here is a list of numbers 5, 11, 18, 22, 29. From the list, write down a multiple of 3. Well, the only multiple from the list is 18. So that's our answer. Question 3. Write 4.666 correct to the nearest whole number. Well, the answer is going to be 5. Question 4. Write 3 quarters as a decimal. Well, the answer is 0 0.75. Question 5. Write down the value of the 7 in the number 8765. Well, the answer is 700. Question 6. Gita spins a fair eight-sided spinner. A. On the probability scale, mark with a cross X the probability that spinner will land on C. Well, as you can see, half the spinner consists of the letter C. So the answer is going to be a half. So I'm going to put a cross at the half. B. On the probability scale, mark with a cross X the probability that the spinner will land on D. There isn't no D on the spinner, so our answer is going to be 0. Question 7. The incomplete pictogram shows information about the number of eggs sold from a farm shop on Monday. On Monday, the shop sold 18 eggs. On Tuesday, the shop sold 24 eggs. On Wednesday, the shop sold 27 eggs. Use this information to complete the pictogram and the key. So the first thing we need to do is to work out the value of each of the parts in the circle. So we have one part over here, second one, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. I want to know the value of one single part. To work out the value of a single part, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to divide the number of eggs sold on Monday, which is 18 eggs, by the number of parts in the pictogram on Monday. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have 18 eggs divided by 6 parts, which equals 3 Okay, so what's it, it's telling us that one part is equal to three eggs. Now I'm able to complete the pictogram. It says on Tuesday the shop sold 24 eggs. How many parts do I need to complete this pictogram? Well, I'm going to divide 24 eggs by three eggs, which gives us eight parts. So I'm going to draw two full circles. So, move it over here. Squeeze it. Yep. And the same goes over here, so let me just replicate that. Over here. Okay. 
Now again, it says Wednesday. The number of eggs sold on Wednesday was 27 eggs. Now to find the number of parts, what we need to do is to divide 27 by 3, which gives us 9. 9 parts. So again, I'm going to draw two full circles and then one single part. So... And then I need to draw one quarter of the circle. So that goes over there. And, and so let me just complete the key as well. So each of these parts is equal to 3. So we have 3, 6, 9, and 12. So, and that should be our final answer. Question 8. A. Write down the coordinates of the point A. Well, point A is over here. So the coordinates is 2, 3. So that's our first answer. I'm just going to scroll down for question 8b. B. Write down the coordinates of the point B. So point B is over here and it's 0 minus 1. So 0 minus 1. C. On the grid, mark with a cross x the point minus 2, 1. Label this point C. So minus 2 is over here. And 1 is over here. So this is my point C. Question 9. A. A bag contains red counters and blue counters only. Number of red counters to the number of blue counters equals 3 to 4. Write down the fraction of the counters that are red. What we need to do first is find the number of red counters. So the red counters are 3. So that's our numerator. 3 at the top over the total number of parts added together. 3 plus the 4 is 7. So our final answer is 3 over 7. B. Write the ratio 12 to 30 in the form 1 to n. So the first thing we need to do is to simplify this ratio to ensure that the first number is equals to 1. Now to make sure it equals to 1 what we need to do is divide both numbers by 12. 12 divided by 12 gives us 1. So over here and 30 divided by 12 is equal to 2.5. So 1 to 2.5. So our final answer is going to be 1 to 2.5. Question 10. Jenny has 12 marbles. A quarter of these 12 marbles are large. The rest of these 12 marbles are small. Each large marble has a weight of 70 grams. Each small marble has a weight of 50 grams. Work out the total weight of the 12 marbles. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find what a quarter of 12 marbles are. This will enable us to find the number of large marbles. So a quarter of 12 is equal to 3. So Jenny has 3 large 
marbles. Therefore, she has nine small marbles. All I did, I've subtract, subtracted three from 12, which gave me nine small marbles. Okay, so she has three large marbles and nine small marbles. What we need to do next is to multiply the number of marbles by the weight. So we have, it says each large marble has a weight of 70 grams. So it's 70 times 3. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 7 is 21, which is... So 3 large marbles weighs 210 grams. I'm going to repeat the process again, but this time I'm going to multiply the weight of the small marble, which is 50 grams, by 9, because we have 9 small marbles in total. So... 50 grams multiplied by 9. 9 times 0 is 0. 9 times 5 is 45. So the total weight of 9 small marbles is 450 grams. To find the total weight of these 12 marbles, what we need to do is to add the weights together. So we have 210 grams which is the large marbles, plus 450 grams, which is the small marbles, we're going to add them together, which gives us our total weight. So the total weight of the 12 marbles is equal to 660 grams. And that's our final answer. Question 11. Reflect the shaded shape in the mirror line. Now what we need to do is decide how far certain points are away from the mirror line. So for example, this point over here. How far is this point away from the mirror line? So it's one, two. Two steps to the left. I'm going to repeat the same two steps to the left again. So one, two. So this point is over here now. Now repeat the same process again. So how far is this point away from the mirror line? One, two, three, four. Four steps. One, two, three, four. This step over here. Now this step, this point over here. How far is this point away from the mirror line? One, two, three, four. Four again. One, two, three, four. How far is this point away from the mirror line? One, two, three. One, two, three. How far is this point away from the mirror line? One, two, three. One, two, three. Now I'm able to connect the points together. So this point, like this point, and this point is connected to this point. This point is connected to this point, and this point is connected to this point, and this point is connected to this point. And that's our final answer. Question 12. The diagram shows a number machine. Input times it by 2, then you subtract it by 3, which gives us our output. A. Find the output when the input is 7. So 7 goes into the number machine. I'm going to multiply it by 2, which gives us 14. So 14 carries on. We're going to subtract it by 3, which gives us our output, which is 11. So our final answer is 11. B, find the input when the output is 41. So we're going to start at the output this time, and we need to go backwards. So all our functions are going to be the inverse operation. So we're going to go that way, and this time we're going to add 3 plus 3, which gives us 44. We're going to go again. Inverse of multiplication is division, so we're going to divide by 2 this time. Divide by 2. So 44 divided by 2 gives us 22. So our final answer is 22. We can always check it. 
So I'm going to put the input back in here. So 22 times it by 4, which is 44, minus it by 3, which is 41. So I know for a fact that this is correct. Question 13. The diagram shows two points, A and B, on a map. A. Find the bearing of B from A. Well, the first thing we need to do is to draw a straight line from B to A. Then we need to grab our protractor and measure the angle. So, I'm going to rotate this around, and it's from A. So, you're going to start at A, point A, and then you're going to measure it. So, it says, of B from A. So, we're heading towards B from A. Now, the angle is 25 degrees. Oops. So we want this angle, and this angle, we've just measured it, and it's 25 degrees. So our final answer is 25. Question 13b. Work out the real distance between A and B. Give your answer in kilometers. So the first thing we need to do is to measure the distance from A to B using a ruler. So let me just grab my ruler. This is my ruler. I'm going to measure it. From A to B, it is five centimeters. So let me put that over here. Get rid of my ruler. Now, if you look carefully at the scale, it says one to 25. What that means is one centimeter on the paper is equal to 25,000 centimeters in real life. So from A to B, we've got 5 centimetres. Now I need to multiply that by 25,000, which gives us the actual distance between A to B. And then we need to convert into kilometres. So let me just multiply 5 centimetres by 25,000, which equals to 125,000 centimetres. Now, to convert it into kilometers, I'm going to divide it by 100,000. So, I'm, going to, I'm then going to divide it by 100,000, which equals to 1.25 kilometers. So, let me just write that two again better. And that's our final answer. Question 14. Ishmael asked 30 students at a college to tell him the sport they each like the best from cricket or tennis or swimming. 11 of the 20 female students said swimming, 2 of the male students said tennis, 5 students said cricket. The number of male students who said cricket was the same as the number of male students who said swimming. Complete the 2A table. So I'm going to start here. It says 11 of the 20 female students said swimming. So 11 goes over here because the total female students is 20 and 11 of, of the, out of the 20 said swimming. I'm now going to start over here. It says two of the male students said tennis. So two, we're going to put two over here. And the last one it said five students said cricket. So the total five cr said cricket. Now the first thing we're going to do, we're going to find the total male students. To do that, what we're going to be doing is we're going to subtract 20 from 30, which is 10. I'm going to put 10 over here. So that adds up. So 10 plus 20 equals 30. That's the total number of students. We have 20 female students and 10 male students. Now this sentence over here is very crucial. It says the number of male students who said cricket was the same as the number of male students who said swimming. It's telling us that the number of male students who prefer cricket is exactly the same as the number of male students who prefer swimming. Now to work this, this number out, what we need to do is that we're going to subtract 2 from 10, which gives us 8, and then we're going to divide it by 2, which gives us 4. So 4 male students prefer cricket, and 4 male students prefer swimming. Now our next step is to complete the two-way table. If we look at the cricket column, we have a total number of students that prefer cricket is 5. 
we have four male students that prefer cricket. Therefore, only one female student prefers cricket. Now we need to find the total number of students that prefer swimming. We have four male students that prefer swimming and 11 female students that prefer swimming. We're going to add them together which gives us our total number of students. So 4 plus 11 gives us 15. Since we know that Ishmael asked 30 students at his college, how do we work out the total number of students that prefer tennis? Well, what we need to do is we're going to subtract 15 from 30 and also 5 from 30, which gives us 10. So the number of students that prefer uh, tennis is 10. Now to work out the number of female students that prefer tennis, I'm going to subtract 2 from 10, which is 8. And that's our final answer. Question 15. Jamil makes a drink by mixing one part of orange squash with nine parts of water. He uses 750 milliliters of orange squash. Jamil is going to put the drink he has mixed into one liter bottles. Work out the greatest number of one liter bottles that Jamil can completely fill. So what we know is that Jamil to make his mixed drink he needs one part orange squash and nine parts water. So let me write that down. So one part orange squash to nine parts of water. So 750 milliliters Of squash. How do we work out the amount of water he needs? Well to do that what we need to do is to multiply the 750 milliliters by 9. So 750 milliliters times 9 parts. Now, one part orange squash is equal to 750 milliliters. Again, so let me just write that down over here. So, 750 milliliters to 750 milliliters times 9 parts, which equals to 6,750 milliliters. Now I'm going to add the amount of orange squash and water in terms of milliliters together. So 750 milliliters of orange squash plus 6,750 milliliters of water is equal to 7,500 milliliters. So that's the total amount of milliliters. Now to convert the milliliters into liters, I'm going to divide it by a thousand. So 7,500 milliliters Divided by 1,000 equals to 7.5 litres. So the greatest number of 1 litre bottles that Jamil can make is 7. So that's our final answer. Question 16. The table gives information about the number of points scored by each of the 16 students in a game. Tina worked out the medium of the number of points scored to be 5. A. Explain why it is not possible for the median to be 5. Well, the reason why the median can't be 5 is that the number of points only goes up to 4. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and there isn't no 5. So the answer is the number 
of points goes up to four and not five. That's your final answer. Question 16b. Tina also works out the total number of points scored by the 16 students in the game. Here is her working. Tina made a mistake in her working to find the total number of points scored. B. Describe the mistake that Tina made. Well, the mistake that Tina made was this calculation. 0 times 1. 0 times 1 is 0. And Tina wrote 1. So the mistake was, the calculation, the mistake was 0 times 1 equals 1. The correct answer should be... 0 times 1 equals 0. Question 17. In a shop, a TV has a normal price of £500. The shop has a sale. On Monday, the normal price of the TV is reduced by one tenth to give the sale price. On Tuesday, the sale price of the TV is reduced by 20%. Chris wants to buy the TV. He has £400 to spend on the TV. Does Chris have enough money to buy the TV on Tuesday? You must show how you get your answer. Now on Monday, the normal price of the TV was reduced by one-tenth to give the sale price. One-tenth is 10%, so it was reduced by 10%. So we need to find what 10% of £500 is. So 10% of £500 is equal to £50. And it was reduced on sale, so the TV price now is £500 minus £50 is equal to £450. So this is the price of the TV on Monday. Now, on Tuesday, the sale price of the TV is reduced by 20%. So what I like to do is find out what 10% is, and then I'm going to double it. So... 10% of the sale price of the TV, £450, is equal to £45. Now to work out what 20% is, I'm going to just double it. It's equal to £90. I'm then going to take away £90 from £450, which will give us our final price. So... 450 minus 90 pounds is equal to 360 pounds. So the TV now costs 360 pounds. Chris has 400 pounds, so obviously he can afford it. So, yes, Chris has enough money to buy oops the TV and that's our final answer question 18 work out an estimate for 790 times 289 divided by 49. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to round it up to make it nice and neat. So this 790 is going to become 800. 289, that's going to be 300. Over 49, which is going to be 50. Now 800 times by 300 gives us 240,000. So let me just write that over here. So equals to 240,000 over 50 
that can cancel out with that. So what we're left with is over 5. So we have 24,000 divided by 5, which equals to 4,800. So our final answer is 4,800. 19a, expand x open brackets, x minus 4 close brackets. Now to expand brackets, what we need to do is to multiply the first term outside the bracket with the first term inside the bracket. So that's going to be x times x, so x times x gives us x squared. Now the second step is to multiply the first term outside the bracket with the second term inside the bracket. So again, that's going to be x times negative 4 which gives us negative 4x. So our final answer is x squared minus 4x. 19b factorise 15y minus 10. Now to factorise an expression, what we need to do is first of all find out the highest common factor. The highest common factor between 15 and 10 is 5. So 5 goes outside the bracket. Now we need to ask ourselves, what do I need to multiply 5 to give us 15y? Well the answer is 3y. Again, so we need to repeat the same question. What do I need to multiply 5 to give us negative 10? Well the answer is negative 2. So our final answer is 5, open brackets, 3y minus 2. 19c. Solve 7 open brackets f minus 5 close brackets equals 28. Now the first step again is to expand the brackets just like I did in 19a. So again we're going to multiply the first term outside the bracket with the first term inside the bracket. So it's 7 times f which gives us 7f. The second step is to multiply the first term outside the bracket with the second term inside the bracket. So that's going to be 7 times negative 5, which gives us negative 35, equals 28. What I'm going to be doing next is to add 35 to both sides. So plus 35, plus 35, we need to balance the equation. So minus 35 plus 35 cancels out, which gives us 0. What we should have now is 7f equals 63. Two ways of looking at this question. What do I need to multiply 7 to give us 63? Well, the answer is 9. Or you can divide both sides by 7, which I like to do. So I'm going to divide both sides by 7. So 7 divided by 7 gives us f, 1f. 63 divided by 7 gives us 9. So our final answer is 9. Question 20. The first five terms of an arithmetic sequence are 1, 4, 7, 10, 13. Write down an expression in terms of n for the nth term of the sequence. So the first thing we need to do is to find the difference in the sequence. So let me just write the sequence over here. So 1, 4, 7, 10 and 13. The difference is 3, 3, 3 and 3. So I know the first part of this answer is going to be 3n. Now to find the last part of this answer I'm just going to construct a little table so I'm going to have n which is the nth term so 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5 and we're going to put 3n over here and we're going to put the sequence. Uh, difference. So let's get a fill out over here. So 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 5 is 15. Sequence was 1. 4, 7, 10, and 13. Now, to find the difference, what you need to ask yourself is, how do I go from 3 to 1? Well, you're going to subtract it by 2. 
Again, from 6 to 4, you're going to subtract by 2. 9 to 7, minus 2. 12 to 10, minus 2. 15 to 13, minus 2. So our answer is going to be 3n minus 2. Question 21. Show that 2 1 thirds times 3 3 quarters equals 8 3 quarters. First thing we need to do is to convert this mixed number into an improper fraction. So 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So we have 7 over 3 times 4 times 3, 12, plus 3 is 15, 15 over 4. Whenever you're multiplying fractions together, all you need to do is multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. So 7 times 15 equals 105, over 3 times 4, which is 12. Now the next thing we need to do is to convert this improper fraction 105 over 12 into a mixed number. To do that, we need to decide how many times 12 goes into 105. Well, the answer is 8 times. And the remainder is going to be 9. Now I'm going to simplify the fraction further. So 8, the common number is 3. So I'm going to divide 9 by 3, which is 3. 12 by 3 is 4. So now I've just proved when you multiply 2 1 third times 3 3 quarters, it equals 8 3 quarters. And that's our final answer. So, question 22. The diagram shows four graphs. So we have graph A, graph B, graph C, and graph D. Each of the equations in the table is the equations of one of the graphs. Complete the table. So our first equation is y equals minus x cubed. Now y equals minus x cubed is going to be b. Okay, so this is reflected on the y-axis and so y equals minus x cubed is going to be b. y equals x cubed is going to be c. y equals x squared is going to be d. And y equals 1 over x is going to be a. And that's our final answer. Question 23. The diagram shows four triangles. Two of these triangles are congruent. Write down the letters of these two triangles. Well, the answer is triangle A and triangle D. Congruent basically means that triangles have the same shape and size. Now, triangle A and triangle D have the exact same size and, and shape. So our answer is going to be triangle A and D. And that's our final answer. Question 24. Sean pays £10 for 24 chocolate bars. He sells all 24 chocolate bars for 50p each. Work out Sean's percentage profit. So the first thing we need to do is to work out how much money Sean has made by selling 24 chocolate bars. To do that, I'm going to multiply 50p by 24 chocolate bars. Now, since it's a non-calculator exam, you can't use a calculator. I'm going to multiply 50p, but I'm going to ignore the decimal and add the decimal at the end by 24 chocolate bars. So, 50 times 24. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 5 is 20. 2 times 0 is 0. 5 times 2 is 10. Add them up together. And then I'm going to add my decimal. So the total amount of money 
he has received is 12 pounds. Sean has received 12 pounds. Now to work out the percentage profit, we're going to be using this equation, the new price minus the old price over the old price times it by 100. And that will give us the percentage. So the new price was £12 minus the old price which was £10 he's paid over the old price times it by 100. So it's £2 over 10 multiplied by 100 which equals to 20%. So Sean makes a percentage profit of 20%. And that's our final answer. Question 25. ADC is a triangle. AED and ABC are straight lines. EB is parallel to DC. Angle EBC equals 148 degrees. Angle ADC equals 63 degrees. Work out the size of angle EAB. You must give a reason for each stage of your working. First thing we should notice about this question is the parallel lines. Now when you have parallel lines there's three types of angles they need to remember. Corresponding, co-interior and alternate angles. What we have over here, AEB, this angle over here, it's corresponding to this angle. So angle A E B is corresponding to angle A, D, C. Therefore, angle A, E, B is equal to 63 degrees. So let me just write that down. Therefore, angle A, E, B is equal to 63 degrees. Since we all know angles in a straight line add up to 180, to work out the angle ABE, what we need to do, we need to subtract 148 from 180 degrees, which will give us the angle ABE. So, ABE is equal to 180 degrees minus 148 degrees which equals to 32 degrees. Now to work out the angle EAB what we need to understand is angles in a triangle add up to 180. So we have the two angles given to us so one angle is 63 degrees and the other angle is 32 degrees. Now to work out what EAB is what we need to do is add these two angles together and then subtract it from 180 degrees. So angle E A B is equal to 180 degrees minus 32 degrees plus 63 degrees. And I'm going to add them together, which gives us 32 degrees plus 63 degrees, gives us 95 degrees. Therefore, 180 degrees minus 95 degrees gives us 85 degrees. Therefore, 
angle E A B is equal to 85 degrees. And that's our final answer. Question 26. The table shows information about the heights in centimetres of a group of year 9 girls. This stem and leaf diagram shows information about the heights in centimetres of a group of 15 year 9 boys. Compare the distribution of the heights of the girls with the distribution of the heights of the boys. Now the first thing I'm going to look at is the range. Now the range is the biggest number minus the smallest number. So the range for the girls The biggest number is 170 centimetres minus the smallest height which is 150 centimetres which equals to 20 centimetres. Now the range for the boys, I'm just going to put it over here. It's 182 minus centimetres, minus 158 centimetres, which equals to 24 centimetres. So clearly the boys have a bigger range than the girls. So let me write that down. Boys have bigger range than girls. Now I'm just going to look at the median now for the girls. So the median for the girls is 165 centimeters. So let me write that down. Median girls is equal to 165 centimeters. Now I need to work out the median for the boys. So there's 15 boys in total plus one, which is 16. And then to find the median, we need to divide it by two, which gives us eight. So the eighth position will give us the median. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the median for the boys is 168. So you write that down. Median boys is equal to 168 centimeters. Now again, the boys have a bigger median than the girls. So let me write that down. Have bigger median than the girls median and that's our answer question 27 the diagram shows a prism placed on a horizontal floor the prism has a height 3 meters the volume of the prism is 18 meters cubed. The pressure on the floor due to the prism is 75 newtons per meter squared. Work out the force exerted by the prism on the floor. Now the first thing we need to do is to work out the area, the area of this prism. We have the volume of the prism which is 18 meters cubed and the prism which has a height of 3 meters. Now to work out the area of this prism what we need to do is we need to divide the volume of the prism, which is 18 meters cubed, by the height of the prism, which is 3 meters. So let me just write that down. So to work out the area of the prism, what we need to do is to, to divide the volume of the prism We need to divide that by the height. Now 
Now, what we have is 18 meters cubed divided by 3 meters, which equals to 6 meters squared. So the area of the prism is 6 meters squared. Now to work out the force of the prism on the floor, what we're going to be doing is going, we're going to be using this equation given to us. Prism equals force divided by area. Now we have, we have, let me write the equation over here, pressure is equal to force divided by area. We have the pressure. The pressure is 75 newtons per meter squared. So let me write that down over here. It's equal to the force divided by the area, we've just calculated the area, which is 6 meters squared. Now, to work out the force, I'm just going to rearrange the equation to make the force the subject. To do that, I'm just going to multiply both sides by 6 meters squared. So, 75 newtons per meter squared times it by 6 meters squared is equal to the force. Now it's saying 75 newtons per meter squared. We've got 6 meters squared. So that's going to give us 450 newtons is equal to the force. And that's our final answer. 450 newtons. Question 28. Write these numbers in order of size. Start with the smallest number. 6.72 times 10 raised to the power of 5. 67.2 times 10 raised to the power of negative 4. 672 times 10 raised to the power of 4. And 0 0.000672. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to convert all these numbers into standard form. The first number, which is... oops. 6.72 times 10 raised to the power of 5 is already in standard form, so we're going to leave that alone. Now, 67.2 times 10 raised to the power of negative 4 isn't in standard form, so I need to convert it to standard form. So it's going to be 6.72 times 10 raised to the power of negative 3. The third number, 672 times 10 raised to the power of 4, this also isn't in standard form, so I'm going to convert it in standard form. So that's going to be 6.72 times 10 raised to the power of 6. And the last question clearly isn't in standard form. So we have 0 0.000672. We need to convert that in standard form. So that's going to be 6.72 1, 2, 3, 4, times 10 raised to the power of negative 4. Now I'm just going to rearrange these numbers from the smallest number to the biggest number. The smallest number is the one at the end, which is 0 0.000672. The second smallest number is this one over here, which is 67.2 times 10 raised to the power of minus 4. The Next number is going to be this one over here, which is 6.72 times 10 raised to the power of 5. And the biggest number is going to be this one over here. So it's 672 times 10 raised to the power of 4. And that's your final answer. Question 29. Given that A over B equals 2 over 5 and B over C equals 3 over 4, find A to B to C. The crucial bit to this question is recognizing the value of B. The value of B 
is equal to 5 and it needs to be exactly the same over here. So the value of b is equal to 3. So somehow we need to manipulate these fractions to make sure that the value of b are exactly the same. To do that, what I need to do is I'm going to multiply this part of the fraction by 3. So 2 over 5 multiplied by 3. And this fraction I'm going to multiply by 5. So 3 over 4, I'm going to multiply that by 5. And what we should have is that the value of b should be the same. So 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 5 is 15. Over here, what we have is 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 4 is 20. So we have 6 over 15 and 15 over 20. So clearly what we can see is the value of b is equal to 15. So a is equal to 6, b is equal to 15, and c is equal to 20. And that's our final answer. 30a. Make q the subject of p equals 6q plus 7. Now to make something the subject, we kind of need to undo the equation to isolate that particular variable. So in this example, we need to make q the subject. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of that positive 7. Now to get rid of this positive 7, I'm going to minus it. And once you minus it, you need to balance the equation. So you need to minus it from both sides. So what we're going to do is minus 7 from both sides. So positive 7 minus 7 gives us 0. That cancels out. And what we should have is p minus 7 equals 6q. Now we need to isolate this q. So it's 6 times q. Again, we need to undo this operation. Now to undo it, you have to use the inverse operation. So we're going to divide 6 from both sides. So divide 6 from both sides. We have 6 divided by 6 gives us q by itself. And we have p minus 7 over 6. Now we're not finished here. What we need to do is make sure that the subject variable is on the left hand side of the equation. So it's q is equal to p minus 7 over 6. And that's our final answer. 30 B, simplify, open brackets, m raised to the power of negative 2, close brackets, raised to the power of negative 3. Now, to answer this question, what you need to do, and this is part of the indices rule, is to multiply the powers together. So we have m raised to the power of negative 2 times by negative 3, which gives us m raised to the power of 6. So our final answer is m raised to the power of 6.